yeah, so hi, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to forget all the things I've rehearsed, and uh, I'll just stick to what I know and uh, stay true to it. Uh, so yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Marika D'Souza, and uh, I am representing uh, my organization, Alive JMBS here. Uh, we are a Frappe partner in Germany based in Leipzig, and uh, our company was founded by uh, my colleagues Rafael and Samuel in 2020. Uh, yeah, and uh, Rafael, I think uh, for the people who know of him or probably heard of him first yesterday because he received uh, an award for being the best uh, framework contributor, uh, is super passionate about open source. And uh, I think uh, I meshed well here because I share the same passion. So apart from that, I also have been quite closely acquainted with uh, Frappe and ERPNX for about four years now. And uh, uh, these products are quite close to my heart because uh, Frappe was my first professional gig right out of college. Uh, so yeah, uh, as you can see, I uh, pretty much quite frequently contribute on ERPNX. And uh, yeah, I also really enjoy uh, improving user experiences and just making people's lives easier. And uh, well, uh, staying uh, on that track, that's essentially what uh, inspired these developments. Uh, so before I move forward, one of the main themes here is bank reconciliation. So for those of you who have no idea what it is or uh, maybe have some interest in it, Bank reconciliation is essentially making sure that uh, the transaction from your real-world bank account and those uh, in ERP Next are uh, in the same state or in sync. Uh, so you want to make sure that uh, the invoices you created, uh, the real-world payments are reflecting in your account because you're going to create reports and you know, uh, partake in some kind of analysis. So uh, we were exploring the tool and uh, the ways to reconcile bank transactions in ERP Next. And then uh, we came across different problems. So while I'm taking you through them, I'll probably break down this whole process into three major areas. The first is syncing your bank transactions, that's getting them from uh, your real world bank into the system. Uh, making some sense out of this foreign data that you've gotten, and then letting the user interact with it and you know perform some actions. So, after you've gotten your transactions into the system, the current state is that uh, we have a bank transaction doc type in ERP Next, but there's no information with respect to uh, you know the parties in your system that are linked to it. You'll probably get a description from the bank or uh, you know a reference number, but that doesn't really make sense. So simply working with this data in a bank reconciliation tool is quite confusing and it's quite cumbersome to you know, then match vouchers. So this is why uh, we've uh, contributed a core feature into ERP Next, which is called automatic party matching. And uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty simple, just like it sounds. Uh, just to enable it, you can just head over to account settings and uh, yeah, you can enable automatic party matching. And then you have an additional setting here for fuzzy matching. So again, for those of you with no context, fuzzy matching is uh, finding similarities between two strings and uh, essentially seeing if they're a good match, uh, not exactly, but you know, based on scores or weightage or how similar they are. So uh, I'll just take you through an overview of how this works. So uh, yeah, before that, where this matching will take place is when your trans bank transaction gets submitted in your system. Uh, now there's different ways for this. You could probably use an integration which automatically gets transactions in your system. So in that case, it will be automatically submitted. Or even if you upload a bank statement, the same case. Essentially here, there's no user intervention required. Uh, it will automatically match it and uh, you know, uh, set it in your bank transaction. So uh, the first check is a pretty simple bank account check. It's quite possible that you already have a mapping in the system. Uh, so why don't we use that? And in case that uh, is not available, we then move on to fuzzy matching if it's enabled for you. And I'll come to why we need to enable or disable it. So in that case, again, uh, if you have the account holder name and the description of the bank transaction, we'll try to find parties that you know, uh, are probably mentioned in it or are quite sim similar to it or fit it, and then set those parties as a match in your bank transaction. 
Now again, uh, when it comes to fuzzy matching, it's really hard to have a sure shot match a lot of the times. There could be cases where uh, you have very similar sounding parties with probably a different prefix or a suffix in your system. So in that case, you could have many parties which probably are the perfect match for this transaction. In that case, our system doesn't want to take a close call uh, and uh, it just won't set anything and it would expect uh, maybe the user at some point in the reconciliation tool comes across this transaction and perhaps sets it themselves. But for the most part, it will automat auto automate this tagging for all of your other transactions and it will make life so much simpler. Uh, so yeah, we can uh, probably just take a look at, you know, how this works. So as I said, it happens on submission of a bank transaction. So I have some draft transactions here. So, uh, yeah, going to the first transaction, we can see here we have some description here. And uh, this description is kind of vague. It doesn't really give us any information about the party. There's a bill number and there's some vague information about what this transaction was for. Uh, now, again, this information might be different based on region to region. From what I've seen with my Indian passbook, there's not a lot of data. Like, I wouldn't get the account holder name. But uh, this does happen for a lot of European ba banks. And uh, that's where most of our clientele is, which is uh, why this uh, works. Yeah, so as we can see, there's uh, not much information here. So maybe we want to go ahead and see what other information we have in the bank transaction. And great, we can see we have an IBAN here. And uh, we could probably make some sense out of this. Uh, and uh, let's go to uh, our bank accounts and perhaps check if we have a bank account in the system that would make a good match. Again, you wouldn't have to do this in the real world. It's just to show you proof. Uh, so yeah, here we can see there is the first account, which is an external account. And uh, the very same IBAN is set here, and the party is set here. So clearly, we found a perfect match in the system. So uh, yeah, I think uh, we can go back to our bank transaction and just submit it. And uh, I think we all know what to expect. Yep, the party has been set. Uh, okay, so this was a pretty simple use case. Let's uh, go and check another one. Yep, so here again, as we see, uh, we have a description here. And this, seems, this description seems to give us some hint of who the party is. Uh, and uh, we probably have this party in the system, uh, is uh, what I think. Uh, let's see what other information we have here. Yep, the account holder name is also mentioned. So this would be quite vital to you know, perform a good match. And uh, so this seems like a job for fuzzy matching to do. So uh, yeah, let's uh, go ahead and uh, you know, like submit the transaction and see what happens. Yep, as expected, uh, the customer did match uh, fuzzily with United Breweries. Uh, and uh, yeah, there weren't too many variables here, which is why I think uh, the match is perfect. Uh, great. So uh, in a lot of cases, you won't really get an account holder name. And you just have to make sense with the description. So even with a description, a pretty long description as well, uh, our fuzzy matching does work if it finds the right keywords and uh, finds that there is a party as such in the system. And of course, you know, while doing this matching, uh, co it's common sense to perhaps check what kind of transaction this is and then check the parties. Like if it's a deposit, you're receiving money, you would uh, probably want to go and check uh, your customers first so that you get a better match there. And here, as you can see, the supplier has also just been set from the description. OK, so now moving to the case that I mentioned earlier, there could be a possibility that uh, you have uh, parties in your system which are quite similar, very similar with you know, different prefixes or suffixes. Uh, so here we can see our description really tells us nothing about the party. Uh, but if we scroll on down, uh, we can see that we do have a party name here. 
SK Industries. And from memory, I can remember that I have multiple parties with the same name. Uh, they just belong to different areas. So this might be a bit problematic here. So, you know, let's go and check that out too. Yeah. So I have these first two parties. Uh, they're essentially the same with just different uh, suffixes of different cities. So the expectation here would be that uh, their scores or their weights would be very similar when it comes to matching. So we probably don't want to, you know, uh, automate this close call. Because, I mean, even if I had to do this manually, it would be pretty hard to find out until I had more context. So, yeah, I submit this, and uh, as expected, I don't really have a party or party type set. But wait, this works, right? Like, is this just like a bug or is it not working? Uh, no, we can go and uh, delete one of the customers also and check out that uh, the match happens. Yeah, so let's say I delete the first one. And yeah, same transaction, uh, same vague description, and uh, we have our party name here. So yeah, on submission, uh, the last party that was left should be set there. Yep. So this is a way to you know make life much easier. Yep. And uh, of course, uh, uh, there are limitations here too, like the ones that I discussed. So for anybody that wants to try this out, uh, firstly, it's already merged into ERP Next in V14, so you can totally go and check it out. And I would uh, probably uh, advise you to test it on some test data because this clearly is, uh, you know, depending on your organizational data. If you have very similar sounding data, at the moment it probably might not work the best for you. So do test it out. Uh, it worked great for us because we didn't have, uh, you know, we had a lot of uniqueness in our parties. Amazing. So now that we've labeled and tagged our data and made some sense of it, uh, we probably uh, want to, you know, hand this over to the user to do uh, some reconciliation. And uh, we try the bank reconciliation tool. And it's great, but then uh, there's a lot of problems. The primary problem that at least I saw was that uh, a lot of things were not accessible. The UX wasn't great. There was too many clicks. I couldn't see all the data that I wanted at one point. And of course, then I started researching, you know, how can we improve this? And the best place to go is GitHub issues, right? I mean, that is one place where I think uh, complaining does a good job. So. Yeah, that, uh, I got like great feedback from the community uh, that were telling us, uh, you know, what they wanted. And uh, then I also started researching uh, other big brand products and seeing what they do right. And uh, yeah, essentially, uh, this is what the new view looks like. Uh, the main point was to introduce a two-panel system where you have the information density of transactions on your left so that uh, this important information is always visible to you. And then on your right, uh, you have tabs or you have actions to, you know, uh, uh, perform against these transactions. So basically, there's full transparency and everything is just visible to you. And along with, you know, auto-tagging, this just makes life much easier. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so as I said earlier, there are, there's a split pane appro approach. Uh, the tab actions are quite visible and accessible. There's clarity on what the impact is after reconciliation. And uh, there's some fine uh, UX fixes. And also the matching is transparent. And uh, yeah, the last one, I'll probably wait to expand on that. So, yep. We can probably, you know, go and check out the new tool. Uh, so, as a rule of thumb, uh, you'd probably have to enter your bank account first, so there's a progressive display of fields here. Uh, these things are pretty standard. You can enter the closing balance as of whatever date you've set there, as per your bank account. And your opening balance, again, you would have to check and make sure that this is the same as uh, whatever is reflecting in your real-world bank account. So, okay, uh, let's set some dates and uh, explore the features one by one. Yeah, the filters are toggleable, so you get clarity. Uh, click on Get Bank Transactions, and uh, here I have two transactions on this date. Uh, they're sortable by different parameters. And, uh, yep. And uh, here, as you can see, there are reference numbers on the last line of each of these transactions. 
So auto reconciliation works great here, which was contributed by a community member. If you have a voucher with the same reference number, it'll just auto reconcile and match. As you can see, this one is still here because it was partially reconciled and there's still amount to allocate. Uh, so yeah, this makes life easier if you are, uh, you know, following, uh, like making sure you're setting your reference numbers correctly. And if not, no problem, uh, we can still explore more features. Right. So uh, editing bank transactions is also super simple. Uh, everything is uh, right there. All you have to do is just uh, uh, change the editable fields. So here, as you can see, the our uh, description there tells us that uh, there's a customer, Hamleys, that's paid us something. And so it was really easy for me to just set the party type and the party right there. Also, you can uh, perhaps set the reference number too if that wasn't already set uh, from your bank transaction. And that will be reflected there. So now you've set some data so you can perform some actions now. Uh, so it's possible that uh, it's possible in the real world uh, that uh, your bank transactions take place, but uh, you don't really, you forget to create uh, vouchers in your system. So creating vouchers should be pretty simple and should happen in the tool with just one click, right? And that's exactly what we're doing here. So the customer here is the one we had set earlier from our details tab. So great, we have most of the information. You can click on edit and full page and uh, it will uh, take you to a new tab with the draft transaction so you can you know, edit your transaction. And when you click on submit, the effect should take place in the bank reconciliation tool. You don't have to come back and reconcile it and like uh, that's the beauty of WebSockets. Uh, so yeah. So let's click on create and just uh, reconcile this entire transaction. Yep, that's what happened. Uh, the entire 50 euros was uh, reconciled. A new payment entry was created. And uh, this transaction has gone out of our view. Uh -huh. Okay, so moving on. Yep. Uh, so now we have this other transaction of approximately 159 euros, and let's get to the meat of this that's matching. Uh, so here you can see that uh, you have some preset filters. Those are like filters that would pop popularly be used, and many other filters too. Most of them are quite self-explanatory. And uh, yeah, show exact amount would do exactly that. It will filter your matched vouchers uh, based on the exact amount. And uh, we have a nifty summary area to reduce cognitive load here. So you can see exactly how much is left to allocate, how much is allocated. So this again, we don't have to do some mental maths here. And the rows here are interactive too. As you can see, our summary is changing as we check the rows. Uh, this is so that uh, it can tell you what the final effect will be after reconciliation. Uh, so you don't have to guess. And yeah, there's match reasons here too. So why did a row match? Uh, as we can see here, it says transaction amount. So the transaction amount is exactly the same. And uh, the reference number is an exact match. So let's select that. We see our two allocate becomes zero. This seems to perfectly reconcile our transaction. Yep, and then we've automatically moved on to the next transaction. Seems slower here because I'm giving a demo, but it'll probably be really fast once you get the hang of it. Uh, so yeah, for this next transaction, we can see in its details tab, the party has already been set, so I'm going to give credits to our auto-matching tool earlier. And uh, here we come to match the voucher. So show exact party is now visible because the party was set, so we have something to filter out here. And uh, here, as you can see, uh, there's no reference number here like we saw earlier. There is... Uh, there is a description and you can see that uh, the party we saw earlier matches. And what are the other reasons? There's a transaction amount that's the same. And the reference number here is contained in the description of this transaction. It's not an exact match. So that's an extra matching parameter that we've added because I believe this happens a lot. You probably just write the bill number and what the transaction is about. So this again makes uh, matching so much easier. That's it. Uh, that one got completely reconciled as well. So now, uh, moving on, you have the option here to reconcile unpaid invoices too. So here, as you can see, uh, you can see the match reasons again. 
And uh, yeah, the reference number is contained within the description again, and the transaction amount is exactly the same, so this seems like the perfect match. So when I talk about one-step reconciliation, this is what I was talking about. So uh, taking a case that I spoke about earlier, it's possible you didn't create a voucher on your system for a real-world transaction. But what if there's already an invoice in your system and that's unpaid? So you want to create a payment entry against this invoice. With the current tool, what you have to do is go to the invoice, create a payment entry, come back to the tool, search for the payment entry, and then reconcile it. But with one-step reconciliation, you can just select your purchase or sales invoice Voice. And uh, when you click on reconcile in the back end, automatically a payment entry is created against it. And that payment entry is automatically reconciled with this transaction. So this again, uh, you know, uh, reduces steps for the user. And so, uh, you know, 27 euros would completely get reconciled. <laughs> Great. And... Uh, uh, now, again, something basic to show you guys is, uh, of course, you can reconcile multiple vouchers also. So here you can see 40 and 49 euros. Uh, they sum up to the total of our transaction. Uh, you can see both their match reasons are the same uh, because both of them were partial payments against this transaction. And uh, the party is the same as well. And here again, you can see the reference number is contained within the description. So yeah, you can uh, simply select both of these. Our two allocate becomes zero, great. It's reconciling the transaction completely. Click on reconcile and yeah, that's it. Your transaction has been reconciled. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, in addition to this, uh, there's great efforts being put by our community to improve bank integration in the first place. And uh, we try to do something similar for the German market. Uh, so you can definitely go onto our website and check out all the other solutions we've uh, come up with to help you. And of course, everything that I've showcased in this talk is completely open source and uh, is a part of uh, ERP Next. The bank reconciliation tool will be a part of V15, uh, still undergoing review. And also I'm collaborating with the Frappe team, uh, especially with Dipesh, to you know, try and solve bugs or some things that are unclear. Uh, to, you know, make everything as clear as possible. Uh, so, yeah, that's that. And, of course, you can reach out to me on any of these. And uh, thank you for being patient. <laughs>